Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be having a look at this HP laptop that's got um, a load of keys that don't work on the keyboard. Okay, so the problem that we've got with this machine is if we open it up, we've got this section here, so most of these letters that don't seem to work, and looking at some of the keys, I don't know, I think they probably had, they probably had stickers stuck over the top of them um, in some instances on here, but uh, we've got a whole section here, ER, D, F, C, W, none of those keys work. So we're going to be changing out the keyboard today. Okay, so let's get started. Underneath, the first thing that we want to do is we've got a battery and a cover. We can get to all of the areas that we need to under this cover. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take off the battery and this cover here. And to do that, we've got two little slide sliders here that we can just slide in. And in theory, the battery should come out, so it's locked the other way. Actually, they want to be on the red to get them out. And that removes the battery like that. And then the cover should just slide off. There we go, should just slide off like that. Okay, so once we get into the device itself, we've got two screws that we need to undo. These are sprung loaded, they won't come out. So you just undo this screw here. So that just undoes and releases part of the keyboard. And the next screw <coughs> for the keyboard, there is another one somewhere. It's around here somewhere and it's down in here, there's a little keyboard symbol there, so we need to undo that as well. Next, we can turn the unit over, and then we can use a prizer tool. What we want to do is we want to slide this keyboard down now that we've removed the screws, and we should be able to get under the back to release it. Now you want to be careful at this stage because of the cables underneath the back. We don't want to damage the cables because we need to reuse those. Okay, that's still not quite out. So let's just double check the screws. Almost here. Make sure they are slackened right off. And the other one was up in here. Okay. So that's it. Let's go back here and see if we can get the keyboard off. That's it. So the keyboard will come off now. Now underneath we've got two cables. So the first one is this big ribbon cable that we want to lift up the black, the black bar here. And then we can just pop that cable out. And then the next one is for the little button that we've got in the center of the keyboard here. So this is on a slightly longer cable. So you can actually turn that over. And again, on the back, on the back of the keyboard here, you've got this little tiny black bar that you can flip up and remove the cable. So that's the keyboard removed. So once we've got the keyboard removed, we can take our replacement keyboard. This one is a little bit different to this. So um, the di only difference is this is a US keyboard and we're gonna be replacing it with a UK keyboard that's got the pound sign here, but it's also still got the, the dollar sign there. Um, so in terms of key layouts, slightly different, but pretty much the same. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take, as you can see, what we've got on the back of this is we've got a black plastic cover that's stuck over the top of this. And I might actually see if we can peel that off and see if we can reuse that. I wonder if there's any stickiness on it. Okay, yep, yeah, there is. Okay. 
just being careful to remove it. And then we're going to lift up our protective piece of tape there. And we're going to place this hmm, slightly, looks slightly different, different mounting. Okay, but I am going to take whatever I can do to cover over as much of it as we can. Let's get the because it doesn't quite line up. It's obviously different. Been placed on differently. So yeah, we do want to get most of it on there. So we're just going to pop that over the top there like that. Okay, now because this is in a different place, it shouldn't make too much difference, but we're going to connect that under here. And again, we're lifting up the little flap at the front of the connector. And we're going to place our cable in there. looks like a different cable but hopefully it'll work and that is just broken that clip right that's a bit of a pain okay right so the clip was uh, a little bit tarnished on there and brittle but I do have some insulating tape, which should, in theory, work just fine. So you want to make sure that the cable is inserted properly. And I'm going to stick a bit of tape over the top of that to hold it in place. Like that. And I'm going to put another section over the top here. And to be honest, if it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world, but I'm fairly sure that will work just fine. And then we're going to take our keyboard and we're now going to attach our ribbon cable again. There's even less uh, space on this one, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to take our ribbon cable, that's going to slot in there, then we're going to pop that lid down and get the clips inserted. Okay, so we're going to take our tweezers this time. I'm going to use that to try and help get this edge in. Okay, that looks like it's in. Let's now adjust the cable so that it's folded over properly. There we go. Okay, so we want to get the clips in at the top, sorry, in at the bottom, first of all, and then you should be able to get the clips in at the top, and they should just slot into the right place. Needs a bit of encouragement to actually get it, get the clips in at the top, which is under here. There we go. Now, once that's in, we should be able to tighten the screws back up here. Do they go in and lock? No, nope, they're still not going in. Okay, let's try holding them. That's better. That's that one in. And now this one over here. Okay, that's that. So that's the keyboard now assembled properly, screwed in. Let's just get a 
slightly bigger screwdriver. There we go. Okay, that's it. So then we can now put the cover back on. I want to make sure that this all works. Make sure all the keys work. Okay, that's that back in. So now the battery and lock them. Okay. So we're now just connecting the unit. On the back is, or on the side is where the power lead goes. So let's now open that up. Make sure we've got some keys that are working. But then I presume that's just because it's very, very old. <laughs> Okay, let's check it. Okay, that works. So the little um, the little mouse is working with the toggle button, so that's okay after us uh, sticking that in. Now let's make sure we've got our, all the keys working. Q, W, E, R, T, Y, U, I, P, O, P. So that's all working. Yep, so I'm fairly confident that that's, that is now all fixed. So we don't have the details to get in here, but we can now shut that down. So now we've got that all sorted out, let's give the screen a clean. And all we're going to be using is some multi-surface wipes, um, a little bit of uh, kitchen roll and a microfiber cloth. So the first thing that we do, we give it a good wipe down with a, a nice wet cloth. And we're going to take our kitchen roll, give it a dry off. Making sure you get down in the corners, all around the edges, and then around the screen bezel as well. It's come up nice and clean. And then finally we use a microfiber cloth just to get any final residue off. And there we go, a nice clean screen there. So while we're here, we might as well give the case a bit of a clean and the mouth trackpad. Try not to turn it on. Don't need to clean the keyboard. That should be clean because it's new. And there we have it. One nice clean resolved laptop. So that was a nice easy one. So um, if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.